Hey guys, it's Trice here, back with Automation the Car Company Tycoon game, and what you're seeing right now is one of my latest builds called the Pyongwa We Farm 4. This North Korean made sports car, requested by one of my users in my Discord server, is their attempt of, well, creating a turbocharged vehicle. It's got some unique styling with the front, then begins to get worse with the rear and the interior as there isn't much to offer, including the turbocharger as it has some extreme turbo lag since they just discovered this marvelous piece of automotive technology. Anyways, I'll explain the details of this car throughout this portion of the video. It has a lap time of 1 minute 41 seconds, 20 milliseconds at the quote-unquote Top Gear test track, and 2 minutes 43 seconds, 86 milliseconds at the automation track. It has a top speed of 132 miles per hour and a 0 to 60 in 12.8 seconds. This vehicle is powered by a weak 1.3 liter inline 4 engine that produces 97 horsepower and 98.3 pounds feet of torque. It has a fuel efficiency rating of 20.4 miles per gallon and weighs 2,428.6 pounds, which equals to 1,101.6 kilograms. And now, let's go over the specs of this vehicle. In terms of how I made the North Korean Pyongyang We Farm, the panel material will be made out of regular steel with a monocoque chassis also made out of regular steel. With a front transverse engine placement and the front suspension uses a McPherson strut and the rear suspension uses a simple torsion beam suspension. With the quality at negative 2 because, well, communism made me do it. Or made us do it. For the engine, it's an inline 4 engine made out of cast iron with the bore set to 76mm and the stroke set to 70mm, which gets the total engine size to 1,270 cubic centimeters, or rounding it up would equal to 1.3 liters, with some push rod headers made out of cast iron. For the balance shaft, we're not going to be using a balance shaft or harmonic damper whatsoever to reduce costs, and the crank cow rods and piston just boring old cast iron, cast, cast, all that good stuff. So for the compression, it is set at the lowest setting of a 6.0 to 1 ratio with the camp profile set at one click down to a 39 and the springs and lifters as is to a 50. For the turbocharger, it's a single turbo, of course, with a wastegate system with the inner core set to 152 horsepower. And the aspiration detail is just a standard geometry journal bearing setup with the compressor size set to 51 millimeters, the turbine set to 40.5 millimeters, the compressor trim, I believe it's a set as is to a 35, and the maximum boost is set to a 14.5 psi. For the fuel system, we're using a single point EF5 with our only option, a single throttle configuration with a compact intake running on regular fuel, with the fuel mixture set to a 14.4, the ignition timing remained as is to a 50, and the RPM was set just a little bit higher to a 7000 RPM. So for the exhaust, all that good stuff, so for the headers, we got ourselves some turbocharged short cast log headers right here with a single exhaust, and that exhaust diameter is set to a 38.1 millimeters, which that equals to 1.5 inches. And we're going to be using a three-way catalytic converter, no first muffler, but a baffled second muffler. And while we're at it, give a brief test of what this engine sounds like right now. That is a crap ton of turbo lag at 4600 RPM where the torque just peaks out and drops. That is sad, folks. Not if you're North Korean. So for the rest of the vehicle, like the drive type and everything, so for the drive type, we're going to be using a front-wheel drive system with a manual 5-speed with the top speed set to 134.4 miles per hour. And for the 0 to 62, thanks to the turbo lag, we got it set to a 12.78 seconds, which that is unacceptable for a modern day vehicle. For the tires, we're using some radial hard long wave tires the front and rear tire with each set to 195 millimeters running on some 16 inch steel rims. So for the brakes, we're going to be using some drum brakes front and back. So the front is a two shoe with its size set to 325 millimeters 
and the rear is a single shoe with its size set to 230 millimeters, with the rear brake force set to a 65, because, well, if I kept it as 100 or so, then we've been locked out the back end so easily. So, under tray, no under tray, barely enough brake airflow, so for the interior, like, why even explain it? So for the interior. But as you can see here, a pretty basic interior because, well, made in the frickin' DPNK. So a basic interior with the AM radio just dead center, like, right up in here, folks. <laughs> yeah, nothing much to offer. Basic interior, basic AM radio, so we restore the transparency and give you a look at the safety features and everything. Sort of safety features, and that's the suspension safety features. We got no power steering, no traction aids, and basic 2000 safety standards with the quality at negative 3 because, well, like I said, Korea made me do it. And now, finally for the suspension, basic things. Standard springs, twin two dampers, pass the sway bars, running on a sport preset. Despite only five problems that we got here, which is complaining about the vehicle, such as the lack of power steering, jammer speed too high, rear brake force speed too high, and the rear tires being quite wide, let's jump in to BMG Drive and take a test drive with this here vehicle. So here we are at the bottom map of Lost Interest and taking a brief look at this vehicle. Well, if you immediately look at the back end, we can see here got some knockoff BMW-esque type of taillights up in here with the model name of the vehicle, the Wii Farm, and Model 4, which is the fourth successor, or the fourth model, succeeded the first, second, and the third one. Which I believe one of the first ones that were ever made of this lineup was the based off the Fiat Sina, where they made a freaking propaganda ad as it was like four or five minutes long about the car driving real slow, the interior, the factory, all that good stuff. Yeah, the front of the vehicle, which I did tinker around, if I turn on the headlights of all 60s headlights, you get the light of the freaking Supreme Leader right in your face. Low beams, high beams, it don't matter. And with the rest of the vehicle, such as the interior, came up fairly well despite seeing some, like, gaps with the chassis placement of the chassis materials just exposed up in here due to that North Korean frickin' technology up in here. And unfortunately, gauges don't move, so whatever. So that'll be with this vehicle. Let's find an open space to do our base performance test. So here I am about a mile down the road on the highway portion of the map here from where I spawned in originally. So for our three basic performance tests that we'll be doing, is the first one will be a 0-62 to acceleration test, followed by a 62-0 to brake test, and lastly, a top speed rumble. With this here vehicle, with this amount of turbo lag, with this small of an engine, it's not going to make it whatsoever. 133 miles an hour is way too ambitious for this type of car. Just, 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 just watch. So start off the 0-62 to acceleration test. Now, accelerate. Look at the RPM needle just fluctuate as we slowly accelerate. Let's just watch this right here. Out of first gear in eight and a half seconds. That's horrible. Second gear. Still horrible. The time we're going to get a 0 to 62 in 15.91 seconds of 728.86 feet. So a lot worse than what we got in automation. Okay, cruise control is set to 62. The game is well behaving as of right now. So hit the brakes now. 62 to 0. Lock up the brakes, do it pretty steady, good. 62 to 0 in 3.43 seconds of 147.78 feet. Well, I could say what the time-wise and distance-wise for a non-ABS vehicle seems a tad below average with the time-wise. Probably same thing with distance. I need to write these down in the future so I don't, like, make dumb estimations of, like, things I've made in the past. So for a top speed run, already in effect as we slowly upshift, Get a better 0 to 62 at 50.59 seconds, so not too bad of a Boeing 737 feet. So now we're at fourth gear, going semi fast, about to hit 100 miles an hour up in here, so we're past this pillar right there. Now we hit 100 miles an hour, just past the pillar, a little uphill. Didn't slow us down a bit, now there's a little downhill. We got an upshift, so fifth gear, 106, 107. A little bit of lag, so keep on going until we run out of road, and there's a big downhill. We about lost control as we gained a little bit of air, almost drifted. Are you kidding me, man? So we're not going as much faster as I thought it would be. We're just catching downhills, and we got the airspeed. Okay, now 124 miles an hour. We got a curve up ahead, so there should be a thing up ahead right here. I see, see right here. Gonna slow down, camera as is, four times, go. You know, full time, full time, and all the way. Here we go, bit air. And we landed, son of a bitch. Are you kidding me? Clip the uh, bridge support pillar thing in the jigs, and the engine is still running. If I accelerate, we didn't stall out. 
So about 124, 125 miles an hour. So top speed run is a fail. So the back end, we stretch this bad boy out big time. Look at that, man. So the model name that we fire him is just stretched out big time. Even the brake lights. Look at the even the brake lights. Look, that that's normal right here. This is all normal. This is not normal. So back end stretched out, left side of the vehicle, that tire is missing. Of course, you'd see the damage app right here. So left side's kind of screwed up. The front end, what the frickin' light of Kim Jong-un shine your face. And the right side, oh boy, that's that, that tire rod snapped right here, man. So coming up with this portion of video will be a time trial run at the map of Italy with the through the center layout with this here vehicle. And we're gonna be doing three laps in the noon hours and first place car, which I guarantee we're gonna go, uh, it's not available. Which we're definitely gonna pass up at 11 minutes, 47 seconds, 510 milliseconds, which I believe, if I have to guess, it was either the Mercedes AMG Benz Patton Motor Wagon or the SRT4 Daimler Motor Carriage, those old ass cars that was revived in modern times. So I am confident we're gonna get first place with this here time trial, so take it there right now. So here I am, like, what, a hundred feet behind the start and finish line with these little checkerboards, this little start finish line, so why place me right here where I could be right up in here, folks, come on. So anyways, get ready to start things off here in three, two, one, wherever it go. I also need to get rid of the freaking torque graph out here, because this always breaks down in a time trial when you first start up. Left corner. Not too bad. So despite it upshifting and like struggled upshift, it goes like beep, 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 beep. let's see, brake. Oh man, we really gotta slow down here. And uh oh, bu bu about hit a building right there, so got straight curb. Good. It seems like the other vehicles I've done, like hitting the curb, you just slap that curb and it's like almost game over, and I forgot no ABS brakes. Slap my dude. Be very careful of the curbs. Yes, I was saying. With other vehicles I tried out, slap the curb, and it's almost like the car breaks apart when you hit the curb. So I almost did earlier back there. So next time, take it slow. So despite the lack of features, this extreme turbo lag, I mean, performance-wise, like agility is decent of a sports car. It's decent. General performance, eh. I wouldn't say more about it. Coming up into our first lap past the EV chargers, we get a time of 2 minutes, 3 seconds, 425 milliseconds. Go hard here. Not too bad of an apex. I... That was a good apex corner record there, right? Alright, this time here. We got the curb. Yeah. Damn. The little lock up of the car and a swing as the vehicle going up and down. Okay, curb. Good. It's the stairwell is coming up to my left, so brake here. Pump. And then... Just... Oh, wow. Is this curb messing up my car? It is. When in doubt, let's just enter in ass and first. Let's reverse it and see what will happen. Let's see. Pop the curb ever so slightly and hit the stairs, hit the deck. How about here? Okay, did good. And a 32 second split gap. Well, second lap, it's going to be horrible. Just watch. Oh, boy. Fast and the furious. Volume 9, plus 10, and we're auto-steering to the left, because it went way too damn fast. And we're going uphill, and we're struggling. It wasn't doing that before in the first lap, but I think the damage to the vehicle has pretty much made it worse. Second lap, 238, 263 milliseconds. Okay, how about right here again? With the car auto-steering, we're gonna slow way down, and then just let the car come to be. And the buildings just stay out of my way. And we did fine, hold on here. Good, because the front bumper is like hella damage. I'm out here too. Good. So let me try this. I'm gonna hop the curb by rolling on it rather than taking it head on. And yeah, right idea, but wrong approach angle to get myself down the stairs. Watch this. Boom, hit the stairs. And boom, hit the stairs again, the bottom of the stairs. I died. And now this car is hella auto steering to the left because of that crash, the, the brakes locking up, tires locking up. All that good stuff. Coming into our final corner, it's gonna be a 2 minutes, 9 seconds, 240 milliseconds. Which gets the total time of 6 minutes, 50 seconds, 927 milliseconds. So we did about twice as better compared to- Oh yeah, it is the patent AMG motor wagon. My old ass videos, the best jacket triple zero days of where I made a basically an inline three Mercedes Benz engine and fit that to a Benz patent motor wagon and basically made an AMG variant of it. So go to free roam, crash out to the little construction barriers or just somewhere up ahead and get a mid speed crash test going. So camera as is, do it. Main engine broken. 
Nice. Main engine is broken. We got some debris here. Is that part of the dashboard? So we got the pedals, the license plate holder, and the center console. Oh boy. Like the handbrake, all that good stuff, including the, the steering wheel. The steering wheel is involved too, man. So if we look at the interior, what is all that's left? So we got the seats. That's basically the, the, the shifter. The, the gear shifter is still in here. The radio's there. The turn signal and wiper stocks are there. And the freaking speedometer. This is stupid, man, but whatever. So for the final part of the video, let's head on over to Brutal Slope 2.0 and see if this car will brutalitize freaking capitalists according to North Korea. So let's prove our point right now. So here we are aiming at the bottom of the ramp here, so let's get ready to accelerate this bad boy right now, skateboard ourselves down, and see what our 0-60 to 60 is like going down here at a high rate of speed. So 0-62, to 62, 5.47 seconds, 214.74 feet. That is more like it. So top speed. Hit top speed. Get ready for the over rev risk. Over rev risk. 170. 100. Oh, boom, 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 boom. No, 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 no. We may have to go again soon once aim at the trees. Aim at the trees. Aim at the trees, please. The car stalled out. And what is going to happen here? Hit the tree. Wrap ourselves around a tree and we're struggling to start. Please start, please. It's refusing to start up. So let me try again at the ramp again. Try to stay centered this time. And I guess do that again. All right, so pay attention to the air. So the car was just instantly just shifted to the right due to the poor aerodynamics and the grip of the vehicle, the grip of the road. Let's see. Let's see. Engine pull up 200 miles an hour. 210. We're going okay. 220. Be careful. 225 at the bottom. The bottom. Stay centered. Stay centered. Eh, 160 upon launch. So we stayed on a ramp. You launch yourselves out the ramp. It just started to boil. So. We basically broke the edges, who even cares about that, so get ready to stop. Now, get a camera going, slow this down to a 60 times, and get ready to play it. So play now, 60 times slow bolt, right in my face. And there goes the car, there goes the seats, there goes the dashboard, there goes the center console, there goes a couple wheels, there goes the rest of the debris, so that's all that, so full time it, now. Tumble down as we go, on our side, and on our back wheels with the car. That piece of debris, all the rest of the debris is bouncing along in the car, messed up and really messed up. So the back tires are still intact. That tire's in the air, and I believe this, oh yeah, both tires are in the air. So we're technically not on our two wheels, so we're on our zero wheels because the by the vehicle, as we can see here, with the damage, is propping it up. All right, final part of the video, skateboard ourselves right now and get ready to crash yourselves down at a first gear into a square block, AKA the wedge thingy, which basically, if you drive it at a very high speed, you get an interesting wedge shaped look of your vehicle while doing so. So here we go, over rev risk, drifting, deja vu. Please stay center for God's sake. Valve train damage, wild over rev damage, dead. So we're drifting, hardcore drifting. We might miss this. We're gonna get a side impact. A side impact at 196 miles an hour. I'd never done a side impact, so let's get this settled right now. So 100 times slow-mo, go. What do we get here for a side impact? Do we get a side wedge? Okay, here we go. There's the side of the vehicle. There goes all of the fixtures. 60 times to 8. Bounce it back. And full time. Well, it's not a wedge-shaped look of the vehicle, so we got a tire, and we got all this stuff coming right in my face. There goes the... What is that? Was that the tire or a piece of debris that was, like, kicking up a lot of dust or something? So it wasn't a wedge-shaped look of the vehicle, so we made our wedge-shaped look. So what is it, F8? Whoops. All right, it's F7. I'm kind of stupid. So with the left side of the vehicle, our point of impact. This has been... Oh, completely... Demolished up in here, folks. Left side, we'll just ignore that. Rear end, ignore that. Right side, okay. Front side, also ignore that. So, well, vehicle didn't survive, and the vehicle is hella destroyed. So that'll do it with automation and BMG drive with the Pyongwa We Farm 4. Well, this vehicle, despite being made in North Korea as a sports car, performance-wise, we're gonna not talk about it, and handling-wise, seems 
okay, but not the greatest. So performance and handling is just dead ass mediocre. Styling, well, front end seems pretty clean. And the rear end, well, hopefully BMW doesn't sue these guys out of business or whatever. And for those who are interested in this type of content, please be sure to like and subscribe so you won't miss out on any videos like this in the future. And also check out my social media down in the description below. So this is Tries Rising Up and signing out.